is the Sony ZV-1, widely recognized as one of the best compact cameras for vlogging and general content creation. But that doesn't mean it's perfect. One of the features that owners often complain about is its image stabilization. Now, of course, you could address image stabilization by simply mounting this to a gimbal. But one of the reasons you buy this camera is for its extremely compact size. And if you mount this to a gimbal, it's no longer quite as compact. Now, keep in mind, this is the Xeon Crane M2, which is probably the most compact gimbal out there when it comes to mounting a compact camera or even a small mirrorless camera. But as you can see, this solution is then hardly pocketable. So today, we're going to run some tests. We're going to see just how good we can get stabilization using all the built-in tools available with the Sony, and we're going to compare them to using the Sony mounted to the gimbal. We're going to do a range of tests. We're going to walk, we're going to walk and talk, we're going to run, and we're even going to do our very best ninja walk to try to get the smoothest footage possible. So before we get started, the usual disclaimer. This video is not sponsored or paid for in any way. All of the products featured were purchased with my own money, and the opinions expressed are entirely my own. Check out the description where you will find the chapters of this video, so if you want to skip straight to a specific section, you can do that. I've also placed product links to the products featured throughout this video, as well as some of the equipment that's used to create this video. Now the ZV-1 has built-in electronic image stabilization that Sony calls Steady Shot. And Steady Shot is available in two different strengths. There's standard and active. Now for the purpose of our tests, we're going to be using the active mode in order to get the best results. So how does it work? Basically there are gyro sensors in the camera that monitor every movement and adjust the image on the sensor frame by frame. Now in order to do that, it does have to crop in on the frame to allow for that movement. Now Sony also offers an additional stabilization solution, which is a software solution called Catalyst Browse. Well, we already mentioned that the ZV-1 has gyro sensors which are used to do the active stabilization. But that same gyro sensor information is embedded with the actual video file itself. So what you can do is record without stabilization, then load your footage into Catalyst Browse. Catalyst Browse will interpret the gyro data and apply those same algorithms but do it post-processing. So whereas your camera needs to do that in real time, frame to frame, Catalyst Browse can take its time to do a much more efficient job. Okay, let's very briefly go through Catalyst Browse. So here you can see I'm in the Catalyst Browse interface and I have some video clips that I want to work with. I choose this one. So I've already marked the mark in and mark out points from where I want to start and stop this particular clip. The next thing I want to do is work on the stabilization. So in the bottom and left, I choose adjustments and you can see here, stabilize clip. When I hit stabilize clip, you'll see it now shows me a split view with the unprocessed file on the left hand side. And it's gonna show me a preview of my stabilized file on the right hand side. The first thing I need to do is analyze the clip. So now on the right hand side, I can select how much I want the stabilization to be. And you do this by adjusting the minimum cropping ratio. The more I crop, the more the stabilization algorithm will work. So you have to find the right compromise here. 
For the purpose of our tests, I chose a cropping ratio which was as close as I could get to the stabilized footage coming out of the ZV-1. So having set your conditions, you can check it. And if you're happy with the result, you can then render it. So we have four different types of stabilization that we are going to be comparing. Now going from worst to best, at least in theory, we have no stabilization, we have in-camera steady shot stabilization, we have the catalyst browse post-processing stabilization, and what should be the best, we have the gimbal. And we're going to compare the results from each of these techniques in our different scenarios. Okay, so let's begin just walking normally with the camera facing forward. Now this is without any stabilization, so as soon as I start the clip you'll see how shaky it is. And when I start walking forward, you can see immediately that we need some form of stabilization here. So let's bring in the steady shot in-camera stabilized clip. And you can see immediately how much better this is in terms of the stabilization. But how does the steady shot in-camera stabilization compare against the Catalyst Browse post-processed version? First off, ignore the fact that the steady shot was shot in bright sunlight. But if you just focus on stabilization, I think you'll agree that the Catalyst Browse is doing a slightly better job. What I don't like so much about the Catalyst Browse version is you occasionally see some artifacts and the image is a little bit blurry at times. But if we compare the stabilization of Catalyst Browse now against the gimbal, you can see that they're probably quite similar in terms of the overall stabilization. But again, coming back to that image quality, it's very clear that the gimbal provides a higher image quality in the video. So next up, let's do some walking and talking. And again, we're going to start out with a completely unstabilized footage. So here too, you can see immediately that we have a need for some stabilization. So let's start out comparing to the steady shot in camera stabilized clip. And again, you can see that it definitely improves the stability of the overall video. But how does the steady shot now compare to Catalyst Browse. Once again, I would say that the stability of the Catalyst Browse processed version is slightly better, but I'm still not a fan of the image quality. It seems a little bit washed out. So how does Catalyst Browse image stabilization compare against using the gimbal? In this example too, I also think that both are providing fairly similar results in terms of the stabilization, but I still prefer the image quality from the gimbal. Okay, for the next test, let's do some running. So this is what it looks like running with stabilization turned off. So clearly we need some serious stabilization to rescue this footage. Now for this test, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. Here you can see on the left, the unstabilized footage we just saw, and on the right, the Catalyst Browse processed version of exactly the same clip. So you can see here exactly how well Catalyst Browse is smoothing out this particular clip. Now, they, you still see some artifacts and blurring, but overall it's doing a pretty good job. So let's compare now steady shot in-camera stabilization on the left with the Catalyst Browse clip on the right now. And again, I think you'll agree that Catalyst Browse does a slightly better job at stabilizing, 
but I think the steady shot provides slightly better image quality. So now comparing the Catalyst Browse clip on the left versus the gimbal, you can see here really the gimbal coming into its own. I have pan focus enabled, so you can see it locking onto the horizon and doing an excellent job and providing far better image quality than with Catalyst Browse. So our final test is the ninja walk. So for this test, I walked as slowly as possible, keeping the camera as steady as I possibly could. And you can see in the non-stabilized footage here that once again, clearly we need some stabilization. So let's bring in the steady shot in camera stabilization. And once again, you can see how much better this clip is. The steady shot really is doing an excellent job. You see the occasional shake, but it's doing an excellent job overall. So let's compare this to the Catalyst Browse version. Here too, I think Catalyst Browse clearly is doing a better job of stabilization. And in this example, because I think Catalyst Browse doesn't have to work quite so hard, we're not seeing as many artifacts and blurriness in the image. But let's now compare Catalyst Browse against using the gimbal for our ninja walk. So here, I would say from a stabilization perspective, there's really not a lot to choose. And also, I think the image quality from the Catalyst Browse version is better in this case. So that's clearly a lot of information to digest and process. And you could go in depth with any one of these stabilization techniques and probably fine tune them even further. But for me, this brief overview has certainly given me a clearer idea of when to use the different stabilization techniques. So let's go through them one by one. Starting with no stabilization. I think it is important to point out that if your camera is stationary, if it's not moving in any way, then it's important to turn off any in-camera stabilization. If you have stabilization turned on, you are cropping in on your image, which is going to limit your field of view. Oh, oops. So yes, as I said, if you have image stabilization turned on, you're cropping in on your image and potentially limiting your field of view. It's also a reduction in your image quality because you're using less of the sensor. And you may even be draining the battery faster because your camera is working harder than it needs to be. So again, if your camera is not moving in any way, turn off electronic image stabilization. So next up, let's talk about the steady shot in-camera stabilization on the ZV-1. And to be honest, I was pretty impressed with how it performed. For everyday casual shooting, including walk and talk type videos, I think it really does an excellent job. And I don't think your audience are going to mind too much about the occasional bump or shake in the image. What's also great is of the three different stabilization techniques, it's by far the easiest one to set up and use. As far as equipment is concerned, you just need the camera, you turn on stabilization and that's it. There's nothing more to think about. Now, where I would not recommend using steady shot is certainly for running or any kind of fast action shooting. But in all honesty, in those situations, I think I would rather use an action camera or a 360 camera before I would use a ZV-1. The other example where I would not use steady shot is for getting the best possible footage. For example, getting some really smooth cinematic B-roll. I really don't think the steady shot can provide that level of stabilization. So next up is Catalyst Browse. Now, in all honesty, I was a little disappointed with the performance of Catalyst Browse. Now, while it certainly did an excellent job of stabilizing pretty much all the footage we ran through it, it also did introduce artifacts into the footage and some occasional blurriness. So I'm not entirely convinced that we ended up with better quality video. 
Now in fairness to Catalyst Browse, I'm sure there are different configurations and settings that you can go in and maybe improve on that footage. But I think that kind of emphasizes one of the problems that you face with Catalyst Browse. It's a lot of additional work in your workflow. Now while it's relatively easy to load up a file and just run stabilization, it's a significant additional step and also rendering the video takes a significant amount of time. About 10 minutes for each one minute of 4K footage you want to stabilize. Another issue is you end up with multiple versions of the same footage, which is going to increase your organization burden as well as the storage that you're using up. Now where I think Catalyst Browse really does a good job is where you really need to get that last stabilization touch on some already fairly good footage. I actually did the experiment of running the gimbal footage through Catalyst Browse and you can see the results here side by side. I also ran the steady shot footage through Catalyst Browse to further improve the stabilization, as you can see in this example, but of course now we are further cropping in on the image. So I can see using Catalyst Browse in those kind of situations where you already have fairly good footage, but you really want to take it to that next level and get the absolute best in stability. And finally, let's talk about when you might want to use a gimbal. Now, the main issues with using a gimbal are, first of all, your minimal travel kit goes from this to this. So you definitely have to carry a lot more stuff with you. Also, when you're out and about shooting your video, instead of just carrying this around and pulling it in and out of your pocket to something more like this which is certainly not something you're going to be pulling in and out of a pocket or a backpack. Plus, of course, before you can use this, there's a considerable amount of balancing and setup before you can actually start shooting. That being said, when you need the absolute most stable footage possible, the gimbal is probably going to give you the best results, and it's going to do so with no compromise to the image quality. Okay, so let's sum up. From my perspective, for normal everyday footage, including walk and talk, I would just rely on the steady shot image stabilization in the camera. I think it does a pretty good job, perfectly acceptable for that kind of footage. If I need something more stable, then I think I would reach for the gimbal to get the best possible results for stabilization. Now, I wouldn't recommend using Catalyst Browse as a standard part of your workflow, but it is certainly a useful tool that you can use if you have some footage you just need to get that extra stabilization on. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to put those into the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the like button and also consider subscribing to our channel where there will be a lot more content around technology in general. Thank you again for watching.